Hi, this is Craig Stocks at Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And this is the second of a two-part video looking at the Andromeda Galaxy and different ways to process it. And in the first video, we got as far as this image of the uh, Andromeda Galaxy uh, processed from the one-shot color camera and using uh, PixInsight and tools like Star Exterminator to separate the stars from the background. In this video, we're going to go through the second part, which is incorporating narrowband data that was captured with the Optolong L Enhance filter. And we're going to do that in a combination of PixInsight and Photoshop. So picking up somewhat where we left off, and I'll close a few of these windows. This is the L Enhance version of the image. And we want to go through basically the same processing steps that we did with the first one. Uh, first, we'll notice that there's a gradient here. And so we're going to use Graxpert, which I found under Toolbox, Graxpert and we'll apply that to this image and that'll even out this um, this gradient uh, so that we have a more uniform background and it also does kind of a preliminary white balance we want to then apply a uh, better color balance and to do that we're going to use uh, spectrophotometric color calibration and again I'm going to grab my saved version. This time we're going to do something different. Because this is a dual narrowband image, in the spectrophotometric color calibration we're going to select narrowband filters mode. And then we'll apply that. And what that's doing, it's going to go through the same process of trying to find a, a, a white balance for the image or a color balance for the image uh, such that the colors of the stars line up appropriately with their their Gaia catalog uh, colors that they that they should be, but in this case, it's no, does it knowing that the red, green, and blue were captured with a dual narrowband filter. And let me explain what a dual narrowband filter does. Uh, in a normal filter, you capture a broad range of red, green, and blue, and then that's combined to create a continuous tone. Uh, RGB color image. In a dual narrowband, instead of capturing a full broad range of reds, greens, and blues, it has a very narrow uh, slot of color that it allows through. And typically for astronomy, those two bands that would be allowed through would be the very specific color of hydrogen, which is a, uh, a specific dark red color, and then the color of oxygen, which is a cyan or a green-blue color. So instead of getting a full spectrum of red, green, and blue, what you really just get is a, a particular slice of red and a particular slice of cyan, which is in the green and blue channels. It looks like a color image, but it doesn't have the continuous tones of a, a regular color image. And we're going to use that to our advantage because one of the things it does is it allows through a higher portion of these hydrogen emission nebula that are within the Andromeda galaxy. So we've now color balanced this. I'm going to next apply a Blur Exterminator. And I have a another saved process version over here and it's a shortcut you can save these process versions and then just drag them onto the image and so this is going to sharpen the stars and also is going to sharpen the details in the galaxy and this takes typically about 30 seconds to run so that is done now and we're starting to see the these hydrogen areas even more clearly now it's time to stretch the image and we're going to do that using the screen transfer function just like we did before and the histogram transformation tool. 
but this time I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Uh, and to do that, I'll click on this plus sign, and this lets me zoom in, not to the image, but to the sliders that are on the screen transfer tool. And the positions of these sliders are what we're copying from the screen transfer function down into the histogram transformation tool. But before we copy them, I can fine tune the position by switching back to the arrow tool and then moving over the slider and click and drag. So for instance, we can make the background a little bit darker and we can adjust the brightness of the foreground or the main part of the nebula. And what I'm really looking at is trying to get the best contrast I can get around these hydrogen areas. And it's a little bit hard to see because of the stars. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be reasonable. So now I'll copy these settings down to the histogram transformation tool, click the square box to apply those. And we now have a stretched, or you'll sometimes hear the term nonlinear image. And the last thing I want to do is apply Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. And this time we don't need to save the stars. So first we'll go to Noise Exterminator. And we'll just apply that using the defaults. And this cleans up uh, any noise. That, this isn't a whole lot of data in this image, uh, so there probably is a fair amount of noise. Uh, I tend to use this pretty routinely, uh, so all my images get Noise Exterminator applied, and typically just using the defaults. And lastly, we will go to Star Exterminator. And this time, we don't need to save the star image. We just want to create a starless version of the nebula. So we'll apply that. And again, this will take about 30 seconds to run. So Star Exterminator has run, and now you can really see these hydrogen emission regions that are within the, the nebula. And we've got a few uh, artifacts, like here, where we have a pretty strong filter reflection. Uh, all we're going to use from this image is the hydrogen, and we're going to extract that in Photoshop. So I'll just go to File, Save As, and again, we'll save this as a 16-bit TIFF and we'll save it in the same folder we were working in before. And 16-bit TIFF, save. And now let's hop over to Photoshop. So this is the image that we left off with before, and we could just start over. Uh, but I might as well use the image that we already have. But I do want to add the the L enhance data to this. So I'm going to do this in two steps. First I'm going to just load the L enhance image and then I'm going to copy that image over to this image. So first we'll just go to File, Open, and here's our L enhance image. And because this was processed through WBPP at the same time, the stars were aligned, everything was aligned, so this image is perfectly aligned to the other one. And I want to just copy it from here over to this image. An easy way to do that is just to select all, which is Control A, Control C, which is copy, come back into this image, and Control V. And now we have pasted in this image. Now that it's pasted in, comes the challenge of extracting just the, the hydrogen regions. If you remember my explanation of the way the uh, dual narrowband filter works, uh, it passes just the red of the hydrogen and then just the green and blue of the oxygen. But there's also a lot of that, those same uh, wavelengths that appear just in general. Uh, so we'll need to clean this up somewhat, and we want to extract just the red. So to start with, I'm going to put this in a group by itself, and we'll label it uh, 
dual narrow band. Now, if we want to add just the red, I can turn off everything but red from this group. And I can do that by double clicking here to the right of the layer group name. And that brings up the advanced blending options dialog. And you'll notice here in the center, there's a checkbox for each channel, red, green, and blue. And as I said, we, we really only want red from this. So I can turn off the green and blue channels, and now we're getting just red from this image. And if I turn this off and on, you can see that it's having a little bit of an effect overall, but it's mostly adding these red areas. The next thing I want to do is change this blending mode of the whole layer group from pass through to screen. Now you can experiment a little bit. Sometimes Lighten works. Generally we're going to want to use screen, uh, although screen, as you can see, is a fairly strong uh, blending mode. Uh, so it's adding too much red. Now we can put a levels adjustment layer in here and attempt to rein it in somewhat. And that, that helps, but we're still getting a lot of red contamination in the core part of the galaxy, not to mention in these satellite galaxies. And if you remember me saying that there's, you know, besides the hydrogen, there's also just some general contamination of the hydrogen from the red color in general. The, the, the stars in this galaxy are emitting all wavelengths, including hydrogen alpha. So the, the red continuum data includes hydrogen alpha, and the hydrogen alpha includes some of that red continuum. <clears throat> what we want to do is subtract the red continuum from the hydrogen alpha to get just a clean uh, hydrogen alpha signal. And it, it usually is a little bit fiddly, but to do that, if you recall, we have this RGB image down here. And an RGB image includes the red continuum. So we'll just make a copy of this layer, and we can just use Control J to create a duplicate. And then I'm going to drag this duplicate up into the dual narrowband layer group. And what I want to do is subtract this image from the hydrogen alpha. And if we do it right, it'll leave just the hydrogen alpha. So to subtract it, I'm going to use subtract blending mode. And almost always it's going to be not correct. So we'll need to make some adjustments. And the adjustments we're going to apply are through a, an adjustment layer. Again, everything's non-destructive. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer, and then I'm going to use this option to clip this adjustment layer to the layer below it. And what that'll let me do is change the apparent brightness of the continuum that we're subtracting from the hydrogen alpha. Most of the time, uh, you'll move the center slider to the right until you start seeing the red come through, which we see right here. And then you'll go down to this bottom slider and move it to the right until you see just the parts that you want to see. And then typically we'll need to brighten it And it becomes a little bit of a, a little bit of a dance going back and forth. And I'm going to add another layer to brighten this before we subtract. And sometimes. Sometimes you just have to resort to a mask to get the last of it out. So I'm going to use a mask 
to mask out the hydrogen that's showing in the center here. And I'm going to do that by adding a layer mask to the group. I'll grab my brush tool and with black and 100% opacity, and we'll just hide that. And so now you can see we're adding this hydrogen from the dual narrowband filter. And if I turn this layer group off and on, you can see what it's adding. We're adding just those hydrogen emission areas. And we've used continuum subtraction to subtract the red from the RGB from the red of the uh, dual narrowband filter. And we know we're using just red because this entire group is only uh, applying red. Now we're also getting some contamination elsewhere. So we'll use this same layer mask and we'll hide like so. So here's a more sophisticated kind of final image. Uh, we have the dual narrowband RGB data added to the base RGB so that we have an RGB image. And let's just look at the, the three main layer groups here. We have stars. We have the dual narrowband and we have the RGB background. So there's a number of different ways to process the Andromeda with a combination of plain RGB and dual narrowband data using a one-shot color camera, uh, processing it first in PixInsight and then following up in Photoshop to uh, create a final image uh, and you can still continue to fine-tune and adjust. And even after I save this, I could come back tomorrow, next week, next year, and continue to fine-tune any of these settings. So, uh, again, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.